I enjoy flame-based weapons in Space Station 14 quite a lot, and I'll be using this video as a way to update my old flamethrower guide, which I think was also already up, an update of a flamethrower guide, but whatever. Plus, I also just moved into a new house, and uh, yeah, things might sound a little echoey. There's no, I didn't bring any decorations or anything yet. I have to go get those still, so uh, bear with me. Well, before we can even use a flamethrower, we must actually go and acquire the flamethrower. As you weren't aware, on the Nuki Outpost, there is a free spray nozzle and a sp backpack water tank, which effectively will allow us to make a flamethrower. I'd say it's more like a flame shooter or like a flame mortar. By the way, we want to bring it at least into this chemistry room, because this is where all the fun happens. This recipe, compared to the last one I made, is actually a lot more streamlined. So what we want to do first is we want to get out a few empty jugs, which we're going to be using to mix with, and we also need to get out our welding fuel. And on top of the welding fuel, we're also going to want to get a little bit of silicon. The silicon actually has no real importance for this, but we need something to heat up. And we want to do this first, so we just set the transfer mount to 1, put in a little beaker, and stick it on this hot plate. What this is going to do, this will heat up the solution, and due to the fact that CLF3 requires heating now, this is really the whole reason I'm making this video is to update the recipe, and it's a little bit more streamlined than before. So now we want to set this welding field transfer amount to 50, and we want to spread it out evenly between all three of these jugs, leaving 50 units of welding field in each jug. Now we want to go back here, and we need to dispense hydrogen and carbon. But thankfully, there's a ton of this, so even if you want to make flamethrowers, uh, you're not really going to be messing with uh, your agent, or if you are the agent, you're not really dipping into the medicine uh, chemicals too much. So set both of these transfer amounts to 50, and then dump it into one of the welding fuels, because what this does, this makes oil. So now we need to take this 50 oil, and we need to mix uh, the 50 oil into each of the other three welding uh, fuel 50 amounts. So 50... 50, 50. At this point now, we just have 50 welding fuel, 50 oil, times 3. And finally, we just need to go here, dispense a jug of ethanol, and we're going to also set this to 50. And then we just pour in 50 in each one, and that will give us 150 units of napalm times 3, so we have 450 units of napalm. At this point, you could just leave them in the jugs, or you could click and drag them into the chem master. It would technically save a little bit, actually, you'll save a decent bit of time just leaving them in the jugs. So, I just leave them in the jugs. Okay, now that we have made all of our napalm and the silicon has been sitting for sufficient time, uh, it's hard to say that there's like a specific time period, but I just let it cook for like, I don't know, a minute or like, I'd say two minutes is probably good enough. You can't actually check the temperature, but it doesn't need to be super hot. Uh, anyways, once we have done all of this, we need to dispense chlorine and fluorine. Napalm does a lot of damage and it's combustible, but it doesn't actually ignite anything. So we need to make chlorine trifluoride. It will ignite the napalm. So we take those two jugs, we take our silicon beaker and we take the backpack. And I'd recommend going over here. This is basically a blast chamber, and also spacing this area will be important for the next step after this. So now that we have put the silicon in there, we're going to put all of the chlorine in first. Uh, just set the transfer amount to whatever and dump it in. And then with the fluorine, we have to be very careful. This is an explosive reaction. Do not go above 10 units. If you go above 10, you have a very high chance of just killing yourself. Stand as far away as you possibly can with the green inter interaction outline and dump it in. <laughs> You've done everything right, it will explode. Now, just for example, I'll show you what happens if you set it to 25. If you set it to 25, this happens. You'll make an explosion big enough that you end up hitting yourself, and, well, don't want to do that. I'm going to edit it out and dump the rest of the fluorine in, and then we'll move on from there. And just for some variety, it's also good to blow up these windows here too, just for extra spacing action. Basically, you just keep mixing it until there's no more explosions. What you do is you just go here with your backpack water tank, and you can click drag it into the chem master. It doesn't really matter if you just leave the buffer like this. You can just do beaker mixing anyway from most things, so just consider this your chem storage. So now we have 450 units of napalm and 280 units of uh, CLF-3. You probably have a little bit less uh, CLF-3. I don't... I, I'm not great at math. So now we need to make flog, and making flog is actually just really easy. But before we make flog, we want to make sure we don't suffocate ourselves with plasma. You just want to leave this door open, and this will end up spacing everything. In a real round, you'd have a, uh, your hard suit on, and the cold is pretty irrelevant anyway, so don't worry about it. So in order to start making flog, we need to make sulfuric acid, and we might as well just make a lot of it. So we, have, we need the phosphorus for the actual part of the flog, so leave that somewhere you'll actually remember. Just don't dispense it right away. 
And then to make flog, we, we need oxygen, which there's plenty of. You can immediately just drag it into the chem master. We need sulfur from the Cindy Juice machine as well. And again, you don't even have to move. You can just click drag it into the chem master. And we need hydrogen, which we did dispense hydrogen earlier, and this will do just fine. Let's drag it into chem dis uh, master. Now we can just mix it in the beaker right here. We could just mix in our oxygen there's two parts then the sulfur and the hydrogen so now we have sulfuric acid and this will be honestly just fine for a lot of flog and now we need to get plasma getting plasma is really easy uh you could literally just walk over here you can use the plasma tables you can use whatever but if you want to save a few seconds of time you can just grab the plasteel that'll work just fine take the plasteel walk all the way back to the chem room Dump it in the grinder, stick in a large beaker, you get extra beakers right here. You can turn the mode on auto, it doesn't really matter. And then you just grind it. And you could just eject it at this point and drag it into the Kitmaster. So uh, we could come back over here, drag the phosphorus in. Could have done this from a previous step, doesn't really matter, it's all fine. Give it infinite time anyway. Uh, so then we put in just the plasma. We put in the phosphorus and we put in the sulfuric acid and that will make phlogistine and then you can redump it back in and just keep making it as much as you want the backpack water tank only has 1000 units of storage so there's no point in going too much further but just to show you how easy it is you just click buttons like so and where is my plasma right there and you just get more plasma if you want to make more flog and i didn't vent it out good enough um you could break this window to make it even more efficient. Uh, you could break these windows as well, but whatever. I'm just I'm just showing a representation. I don't think I even really took any damage, even though I was being careless with the mixing. We now then take our napalm jugs and we just dump in all the napalm and set the transfer amount to something high, so you're not just clicking forever. This is a little tedious, but keep in mind that this is a ton of killing potential for free. You don't have to spend TC. And you can definitely get faster at this than I am. And then we have to then take all of our CLF3 and a beaker and transfer it over manually. So with how much we made, we ended up making almost 900 units. We could fit in more flog if we wanted, but I, if you manage to shoot every single bit of your flamethrower, I'd be impressed. Now the way the flamethrower works, you do have to give up your backpack slot. All you do is you put the water tank on your back and a spray nozzle in your hand. And... We have a fully functioning flamethrower that is fully automatic. It does not take very many shots at all to kill somebody who's not wearing armor, or a hard suit I should say. If the person is wearing a hard suit, spraying them will do minimal damage, but it won't really do a whole lot. Within a few seconds though, this person is crit, and without somebody splashing with water, they are pretty much doomed to uh, probably ash even. Uh, it's a pretty powerful weapon, this person is dead, and that's just how strong flamethrowers actually are. Run up against a hard suited user though, you probably don't want to, you could set them on fire, they might end up setting somebody else on fire, but you're really not going to end up doing damage to them. However, people often panic when they're set on fire, even if it doesn't really hurt them, and they may stop, drop, and roll, which puts them out of the fight and will drop their weapon. Due to the fact you have to give up your backpack for this, I would highly, highly recommend that you end up getting a python as your backup. Pythons don't require wielding, they're armor piercing, so perfect for the people wearing the hard suits that you're going to be having an issue with. And you only have to hit them uh, four times to crit them, regardless of their armor. So, having some decent aim is pretty good. Also, I would also recommend just running, like, an energy sh sword or something. Just good we a good backup weapon, Fist of the North Star. Anything to deal with those pesky hard-suited users that are resistant to your flames. Other than that, that's pretty much your flamethrower. Thank you for watching.